speed is the most fundamental stat in Pokemon. I use this example often. Speed is the difference between Empoleon knocking out Torterra with Ice Beam or Torterra knocking out Empoleon with Earthquake. If you control the speed, you control the game. Trick Room is a move in Pokemon that reverses the speed of all Pokemon on the field. It's pretty common in the doubles metagame, but pretty rare in the singles metagame. The main issue is time. Trick Room only lasts 5 turns, which is a long time in doubles, where twice the amount of damage is being dealt per turn, but it's a short time in singles. But rare doesn't necessarily mean bad. What if I can find a strategy that not only uses Trick Room, but dominates with it? I'm playing in the Smogon Champions League, one of the biggest, most elite tournaments for 6v6 battling, where you play on a team of players and try to win the trophy. But I've never actually won the tournament before. That's why this season I'm on a mission to get my first championship. I'm playing as my team's NU player, the fourth tier, and I'm getting rid of all the stops and creating the best, most powerful teams I can in order to win. After my loss last week in week 2, I knew I had to bounce back with something special, and I created my team built around Ferrigiraff Trick Room. I head into week 3 with my best team yet. Earlier this month, the tier shifts happened where Pokemon periodically move up or down a tier based on how often they're used. A lot of Pokemon from the DLC dropped into NU, but a couple Pokemon actually moved up out of NU. Most notably, the NU tier lost Blissey and Umbreon, two of the tier's best special defenders. I wanted to take advantage of that, and that is where I was inspired by VGC, the official doubles format. In fact, I have a couple VGC-inspired Pokemon on the team, but what I really liked was Frigirath. Ferrigiraff is actually a PU Pokemon in singles, which means it can be used in NU, but no one really does. Most people use Ferrigiraff in singles as a Wish Protect Pokemon, where it leverages its high HP stat to keep its teammates healthy, or they use a moveset with Nasty Pot and Agility. This is in contrast to VGC, where it's mainly a Trick Room support Pokemon. Trick Room plus Nasty Pot was getting a little usage in the VGC format. Nothing major, but it is seen every once in a while. What if I take that idea and adapt it to NU? I created a Nasty Plot Trick Room for Rigiraf with Terra Blast, Fire, and Psychic. I would go for Nasty Plot and then surprise my opponent with Trick Room, and Ferrigiraff, with a negative speed nature, would use the Trick Room for itself to try and sweep the game. Ferrigiraff is tough to KO because of its high HP and it only has two weaknesses, Bug and Dark. Most sweepers want a way to boost speed and Trick Room lets me do that. Speed and power, the fundamentals of Pokemon, just reached in an unorthodox way. The most common way to deal with the normal and psychic type Ferrigiraff is to use a steel type Pokemon. That's especially true because most people expect Ferrigiraff to be a passive Wish Protect Pokemon, and a steel type Pokemon could use that as an opportunity to get up Stealth Rock. I take advantage of that by luring in the steel type and then destroying it. I did some testing, and Trick Room Ferrigiraff was a dominating Pokemon capable of sweeping entire teams on its own. No one had ever used this Trick Room idea in singles before, to my knowledge. I knew I found something golden, something that absolutely no one would expect but also something that was actually really, really good. I knew it was a good idea to build around Ferrigiraff, and now it was about finding the right partner Pokemon to pair alongside Ferrigiraff. First, I added a Swords Dance Technician Scyther with U-Turn, Dual Wing Beat, and Trailblaze. Scyther is a powerful Pokemon in an NU context, and it forces the opponent to react with their physical wall. When that happens, I can U-Turn into Ferrigiraff, who often can use these defensive walls as setup bait for a Nasty Plot. It's a real nice synergy to have, but it also works the other way too. If Ferrigiraff ever lures in the Steel-type Pokemon like it's supposed to, that means in the late game, there's no Steel-type Pokemon to stop Scyther. Early game Scyther spams U-Turn, and late game Scyther goes for the win with Swords Dance and Trailblaze to boost speed. Then, I added a Choice Scarf Tatsugiri. Tatsugiri is well known for its adventures with Dondozo in doubles, but obviously that doesn't apply here. In singles, most people use Tatsugiri as a rapid spin Pokemon with Nasty Plot. But to me, it felt a little slow to develop, and I decided to go with the moves that I used in VGC a lot with Choice Scarf. Tatsugiri has a pretty good base 120 special attack stat, and it's augmented by powerful moves such as Draco Meteor. I already know firsthand how fast and powerful a Choice Scarf Draco Meteor can be, and it's definitely strong enough for the NU tier. The only fairy type in NU is Grimmsnarl, and if Ferrigiraff removes the Steel type Pokemon, then there's almost nothing that stops my Draco Meteor. In the same vein, Tatsugiri and Scyther can work together to break through the Steel type Pokemon because most Steel type Pokemon don't have a reliable HP recovery move. 
Scyther can also U-turn to bring in Tatsugiri who is relatively frail and would need help getting in the game. I also added the move Memento on Tatsugiri. In a pinch, I can sacrifice Tatsugiri to create an opportunity for either Nasty Plot Ferrigiraffe or Swords Dance Scyther. The synergies combine to form an offensive triangle where each member supports the other members in several different ways. The key is the flexibility. There is no one way to attack. You can choose the right approach based on the situation. Ferrigiraf is most often the star Pokemon, but in any game, any one of the Pokemon can be the star and the other two can support it. From there, I added a defensive hazard backbone of Copper Raja and Gligar. Copper Raja is my special defense wall with Stealth Rock and Knock Off as its supporting moves. Gligar is my physical defender with moves like Spikes and Knock Off too. It also has U-Turn to help position myself. Gligar can tank a hit and then underspeed the opponent to U-turn and let me go to my own attacking Pokemon. I also give it a Terra Go so that it can block Rapid Spin if I need to. With 5 Pokemon done, I already reached my checklist. I had the 3 fundamentals of winning games. Speed, Power, and Hazards, and I had the X Factor of Ferrigiraf. In the final team slot, I kept it simple with Salazzle, one of the best Pokemon in the NU tier. It has good type synergy with the rest of my team and its offensive firepower is always appreciated. It also gives me a more directly threatening way to attack Steel type Pokemon to make sure I don't become over reliant on Ferrigiraf. And that's basically the team, to try and bulldoze the opponent with the offensive triangle led by Ferrigiraf. Before we get to the battle, if you like this tournament style content, let me know by liking this video and subscribing if you're new. It lets me know to keep making more of this type of content. But back to the battle. The battle starts and I notice he has somewhat of a passive team. It uses the offensive core of Jolteon plus Sneasel, two fast and strong Pokemon, but the defenses are backed by Bronzong and Altaria, two very passive Pokemon. They are excellent at walling Pokemon, but they don't do a lot of damage. My goal is to try and expose that with Ferrigera. My most typical leads are Copper Roger and Gligar to get hazards up. I figure that he's going to lead Quillfish to match up well versus that because of Intimidate and try and taunt or get his own spikes up. I decide to anti-lead Quillfish with my Tatsugiri, and it works. I get the lead prediction right and I'm ready to one-hit KO Quillfish with my Draco Meteor. But obviously he's going to switch out to something like Bronzong or Shaman who can easily take on Draco Meteors. I think they'd be scared of Nasty Plot. I kind of want to double Gligar in on Bronzong. Or do I go straight to Ferrigiraf here? I could, because there's no way they stay in on Draco. I predict a switch and go immediately into my Ferrigiraf. As it happens, he goes to Shaman. Shaman versus Ferrigiraf. Ferrigiraf often has Sap Slipper to be immune to grass type attacks, so nobody will ever use a grass type attack versus me. It's not worth it. Except, I'm not Sap Slipper. I'm Armor Tail to protect me from moves like Sucker Punch. When I built this team, I knew that no one would ever dare use a grass type move versus Ferrigiraf because Sap Slipper is so common. I knew I could just pretend I have it, and it's like I get two abilities in one. And it happens here. Instead of Shaman hitting me with Seed Flare, I trick it into switching out as I Nasty Plot. The best part is he goes to Bronzong. I mean, why wouldn't he? Versus most Ferrigiraf that makes the most sense. Bronzong has great special defense, can wall a Ferrigiraf, and can get Stealth Rock up too. And then it hits him. And this is what we want. Is it time though, for the Terrifier? Should I Trick Room first, or should I Terrifier first? Both are good plays for me. I want to get rid of Bronzong, and they don't have a Draco switch in anymore. There we go. Okay. Terra Fire Blast destroys Bronzong and the first line of defense is broken. There's no way to stop Tatsugiri's Draco Meteor or Scyther's Dual Wing Beat. At this point, he's trying to cut his losses. Altaria does little damage to Ferrigiraf, but at least he can chip it down enough for something else to knock it out. It's not ideal to lose two Pokemon to a Ferrigiraf, but at least he can live to fight another day. But Ferrigiraf is not the type of Pokemon to show mercy. I finally unveil the novelty Trick Room, and now Ferrigiraf controls the game. It outspeeds every Pokemon cannot be hit by any priority move, is at 2 times special attack, and it has one of the best attacking combinations in Fire and Psychic. Okay, got it. Let's go. Two turns of Trick Room left. Terra Blast is a KO from what I can see. There we go. And this is a game, certainly. The Ferrigiraf works exactly as planned. Like, the whole idea with this Trick Room stuff is really, really good. Good. The game is over. 
Feridiraf starts and completes the quickest win in Champions League history. Even though it only lasted 10 turns, I hope you can appreciate the nuance that went into building the team. The sweep started on turn 2, but really it started in the team builder. My personal record moves on to 2-1, and one, and good news, our team would win the week 6-4, bringing our season record to 1 win, 0 losses, and 2 ties. We are currently in 4th place with the top 4 making playoffs and 6 weeks left to go.